Just jumping right into the vocabulary, we have good morning, just good morning, like to a friend or whatever. So basically what I'd say to you guys is ohayo. So ohayo. You can extend that ooh if you want. Ohayo, says Yuki. Um, generally, if I'm talking to family, friends, if I see them when I get up in the morning, um, it's just ohayo, hayo. You can even take out the O if you want. A lot of people just say hayo. If you add gozaimasu, which we'll go over a little bit later too, if you add that, it's the more polite greeting. And it's something you'll say to people you're not really familiar with or people you've just met or people you're passing on the street. Often when I'm biking to work, I'll pass like older people out walking early in the morning and I'll say ohayo gozaimasu, but not that stiff. It's just ohayo gozaimasu. You don't have to say it super formally, but it is polite to say ohayo gozaimasu. Yeah, and when you go to work, when you walk in, you're generally going to say ohayo gozaimasu. Hello or good day. You're generally not going to use this too early in the morning, but if you've been awake for a couple hours, even like sometime after 10, I'd say even after 9, a lot of people will start saying konnichiwa. 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 You can basically use that a couple hours after you wake up to, I don't know, four or five in the evening. It's sort of a feeling type of thing. If it's starting to get dark, you're generally not going to say konnichiwa because it means good day or good afternoon. Instead, you'll say konbanwa. Konbanwa. And that, that n, the second n, if you look here, we've got konbanwa. You can sort of blend that into the ba. So, konbanwa. Like it, it sort of sounds more like a m for most people that I hear using it. So, that's good evening. Sayonara. Now, this is one that the book actually covers fairly well. Sayonara. I think everyone knows that even if you've never tried to learn Japanese in your entire life. Everyone in the world seems to know sayonara. And they know it as meaning goodbye. But it's a lot more formal then goodbye. And it's almost never used. There's some very specific situations in day-to-day -day life that it may be used. And generally, it's not when you're saying goodbye to someone you know. So sayonara is used basically just by students who are saying goodbye to their teachers. Um, every single day at the end of class, when the kids go outside to like get dropped off to their parents, they'll do an aisatsu or greetings. And that is Sensei sayonara, minna-san sayonara. And I think they do that in other schools as well. And that's like the only time people actually use sayonara. The other times are when you think you're not going to see someone for a very long time, like until your life changes completely. Like I'm going to get married and have kids or something and I won't see you till after that type of farewell. If you're going to see someone the next day, like after work, or if you're going to even see them in like a month or two, you're not going to say sayonara. You're going to say some other things. Like if you see down below, I've got ja mata, ja mata ne, which is just later, ja mata ne, or something like that. Mata ne, or ja ne, that's fine too. Just ja ne, save the sayonara. <laughs> Moving on to good night. It's evening for us and I'll be going to sleep soon because I'm exhausted. I've been up since five o'clock. Uh, to friends, family, people you, you know, know pretty well, you just say, Oyasumi. Oyasumi. So that's an easy one. You can add nasai, which is like the command for like kids almost. You, you say, uh, well, it's Oyasumi nasai. So it's like, go to bed basically. But it's, it's a polite good night. Another example of when you would use nasai is like tabe nasai, which is taberu is to eat. And if you change it to nasai form, it's like eat please or eat. Especially if you're saying to kids, tabe nasai. And then I just covered ja mata or ja mata ne. And then the next one is the goodbye you would say when leaving work, which is shitsure shimasu. Or when you're getting off the phone, shitsure shimasu. That's when you're saying goodbye after work. So when you're about to leave the office, every day when I'm about to leave the office, because I generally leave before the Japanese teachers, I say, Osaki ni shitsure shimasu, or just shitsure shimasu. Um, osaki ni means first, like, or before you. So it means uh, shitsure shimasu is just like being rude. So it's like sort of apologizing for leaving early. 
That's basically what it is. You, you basically, it doesn't feel that way, but the actual language you're using is, I'm sorry that I'm leaving before you. So you also say shitsureishimasu when you hang up the phone. So if you're on the phone with someone and you're gonna hang up, you just say shitsureishimasu and you hang up. That's pretty much what you say to almost anyone that you don't know when you're on the phone with them and you're hanging up. Thanks in Japanese. Everyone knows this one, I think. It's arigato. Arigato is just thanks. If you add gozaimasu, arigato gozaimasu is the more polite thank you. But even I use it sometimes with people I know. It's, it's just sort of a feeling thing. In the beginning, when you're first learning, if it's a little hard to remember gozaimasu, you can just say arigato and it'll be fine. Nobody... Nobody will think you're rude if you don't add gozaimasu. One of the most common words in Japanese, without a doubt, the one you will use the most is sumimasen. Most people don't actually say the whole word. Most people do not say sumimasen. They say suimasen. So it's sort of like you take the mi and change it to an e and you just say suimasen. Nobody ever says sumimasen. Literally everyone will say Sumimasen. So they don't even say suimasen. It's just sumimasen. So it's like s i masen. That makes it way easier to remember for everything. So it can mean I'm sorry. It can mean excuse me. It can mean it's getting the attention of a waiter. It's when you bump into somebody. It's when you need to get anyone's attention. Uh, you have a question or you feel really bad. Like there's also you. You probably know gomen or gomen nasai. And those are. Those are also I'm sorry, but like if you're really sorry and you feel like you really screwed up, you're gonna get down on your knees and bow and say sumimasen deshita. Ie, if someone says gomen nasai or sumimasen to you, you can respond with ie as in like it's nothing, no problem. It also means like a flat no, like do you want to do something? Ie. Uh, most people will use something else like ia, yeah, like Dan said, ya. Ya is more common with your friends. You want to go eat ramen? Yep. Ikitakunai. I don't want to go. Or just, mmm. These are some more fun ones. When you leave the house in Japan, I think no matter what, people will say this. And it is, Ittekimasu. Ittekimasu. It means, it's translated literally as go, come back. Like, to literally translate it, it's that. Without the no grammar, it's just go, come back. That's what it means. But it's just a set phrase that you say when you leave the house. Like, that's all. It's like, I'm going. I'll be back. See you later. Something like that. And what everyone will always respond is, Ittarashai. Ittarashai. And that itte is the te conjugation, once again, of to go. Iku. So it's itte. Rashai. And that rashai is a very polite, like, please do something, basically. So please go. <laughs> it's just a see you later, and it's just the set phrase you say after someone else says, Ittekimasu. Itterashai. All right, so when you come back to the house, you can't come in silently. You left with all that pomp and cert. Pomp, uh, never mind. You left with all that Ittekimasu and stuff. You come back with a phrase too. And this is Tadaima, which is I'm back. The literal translation for Tadaima is now. It's right now. This moment. And the response to that is okairi, which is welcome back, or it just means you're home. I guess, yeah, you're home. Okairi, welcome home. And the you see nasai come back in again, which is once again the do it. So okairi nasai, so come back home, welcome back home, basically. These are a couple other fun ones that don't really have any good translations in Japanese. In my kindergarten, I'm once again, I'm a homeroom teacher for an immersion class. So we, we generally, we do all these rituals and whatnot that Japanese people do day to day. Like say these words before they eat and after they eat. But we have a really hard time, me and the other teacher, deciding what to say. Because there's nothing like this in English. I mean, I guess you could say it's like a prayer but it's just a single word. So we end up just saying before we eat, let's eat with our hands together. And what they actually say in Japanese is itadakimasu, itadakimasu. So yeah, it's just what you say before you eat. It's like, thank you for this food, I guess. It could also be like a prayer or something for thank you for this food. But we just say, let's eat, itadakimasu. And some people are really like, really not strict but like they they always say it like a lot of, most people without fail before they eat anything 
it will say itadakimasu, which is just like I receive. I think the literal translation is like I receive in like a formal sense. Anyway, after you eat something, you say gochisou sama, and you can add to make it more polite, deshita, which is just the past tense. And this translates literally to it was a feast. And the deshita is, of course, the past tense was. So you can cut that off if it's people you know or you're just alone. Gochisou sama. You will also say gochisou sama deshita when you are leaving a restaurant. As you're leaving, you'll like say to the cook or basically anyone you can see that works there, gochisou sama deshita. These are very important ones. If you ever meet a Japanese person, you first meet someone, you'll generally say hajimemashite. Hajimemashite. So I might say my name. Hajimemashite. Andy desu. Hajimemashite. It's just nice to meet you. And then, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. I still have a hard time saying it. Most, wor most words aren't too difficult, but for some reason, the, just the ku to the o, it's just so hard to get out. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. I can never change from u to o fast enough. But anyway, the literal translation is, please be good to me. Don't be a jerk. But it's just a set phrase that you say after you meet someone or when you want someone to do something for you. So at the end of a request, Yoroshiku onegaitashimasu, I want you to do something for me at work. And yeah, it's used after you meet someone. Hajimemashite, Andy desu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Just means please be good to me or whatever. One of the things that you will say before you leave work or that you might just say to someone who's working hard that you see on, for example, climbing a mountain or something or when they finish doing something, some kind of work, you say, Otsukaresama So I might even say that at the end of a lesson. It just means the literal translation is you are tired. Like literally, you are tired person. That's your name. Your name is tired is the literal translation of that. Otsukare is tired, but very polite. And then sama is like, you know, you put at the end of a very polite name. So Otsukaresama Mr. Tired Deshita. You were Mr. Tired. Yeah, that's a literal translation, but it's just it's just another one of those set phrases that you say, which is, can be like, oh, you've worked really hard or it's acknowledging someone's hard work. And it can also be it's time for me to go home and stuff like that.